Defense Monetary Policy Committee press briefing. The committee held its third meeting of the year during which the latest economic developments and risks to the outlook were discussed. I now present to you highlights of these deliberations and the decision of the committee on the monetary policy stance. First, I start with, as usual, with global economic development. The 2013 July update of the IMF's World Economic Outlook revised global GDP growth downwards from 3.3% to 3.1%. This was on account of slackening growth in the major emerging market economies, lower commodity prices, financial stability concerns, deeper recession in the euro area, and a slowdown in the U.S. economy. However, growth was stronger than expected in Japan, driven by consumption and net efforts. Growth in, is expected to pick up slowly in advanced economies in 2013 at 1.2%. Emerging markets and other developing countries, on the other hand, are projected to grow at about 5%. In Sub-Saharan Africa, growth is forecast at 5.1% in 2013. The outlook suggests that much of the sub-region could sustain a rapid expansion on the back of rising foreign direct investment and relative economic, macroeconomic stability. The U.S. Fed's statement about the possibility of a slowdown in quantitative easing led to some volatility in global financial markets during the period since the last MPC round, as this impacted on capital flows to emerging markets and yields on long-term bonds. Global inflation also has, is also expected to remain subdued as cost pressures related to commodity prices continue to ease, while demand factors in high-income countries remain weak. Inflation in emerging economies is expected to stay low, but significant upside risks remain in the outlook for high growth sub-Saharan African countries. In the commodities market, crude oil prices are expected to slow down during the second half of 2013, with forecasts ranging between 100 US dollars and 105 US dollars per barrel. Gold is projected to decline from $1,525 to $1,200 per fine ounce, while cocoa prices are expected to stay broadly stable at about $2,470 per ton. These developments in the external environment continue to impact on the domestic economy as declines in commodity prices affected external sector performance. The announced slowdown in quantitative easing in the U.S. also affected the yield on the new Ghana Euro bond. <coughs> Domestic de economic developments, first I take inflation and growth. Headline inflation based on the old series for June 2013 was 11.2%, up from 10.4% in March and 8.8% in January. The rise in inflation was largely due to petroleum price adjustments, demand pressures, and seasonal factors. Food inflation was 6.4% in June 2013, from 5.5% in March 2013. Now food inflation edged up to 14% from 13.2% in March. The reconstituted CPI basket puts headline inflation at 11.4% in June 2013 com compared to 10.6% in March. The Bank's Composite Index of Economic Activity, CIEA, 
indicated the marginal pickup during the second quarter of 2013. On a year-on-year -year basis, the index showed a growth of 3.4% compared to a 0.6% contraction in March 2013. Components of the CIA that recorded positive yearly growth rates include sales of key manufacturing entities and DMD's credit to the private sector. Surveys conducted by the Bank of Ghana in July indicated mixed sentiments by businesses and consumers. Consumer sentiments improved as indicated in the outlook for the economy as well as willingness to purchase household durables. The consumer confidence index increased from 96 point, increased from 96.1 in April to 101.1 in June. Business sentiments, however, softened, with the index declining from 99 in March to 92.4 in June. Government fiscal operations. Preliminary data for the first half of the year indicated that both revenue and expenditure were below their respective targets for the period. The budget recorded an overall deficit on cash basis of 4.5% of GDP, which was within the target for the period. Total revenue and grants was 9.5 billion against the target of 10.6 billion. Of this outend, domestic revenue amounted to 9.9 billion below the target of 9.8 billion. Total tax revenue amounted to 6.7 billion compared to the target of 7.7 .7 billion cities. All my billions are cities. <laughs> this was as a result of underperformance of all the tax types reflecting lower imports and energy sector challenges. Grant disbursements amounted to 507.6 million cities, Ghana cities, which was 41.8% below target. Non-tax revenue for the period amounted to 2.2 billion Ghana cities, higher than the budgeted target of 2 billion Ghana cities. Total expenditures including payments for the clearance of arrears and outstanding commitments for the first half of 2013 amounted to 13.5 billion Ghana cities compared to the target of 14.6 billion Ghana cities. Employment compensation for the half year amounted for, to 4.7 billion Ghana cities against the target of 4.3 billion Ghana cities. Similar interest payments amounted to 2.2 billion Ghana cities against a target of 1.6 billion Ghana cities. The deficit of 4 billion Ghana cities, that is 4.5% of GDP, was financed mainly from domestic sources, resulting in a net domestic financing of 3 billion Ghana cities, lower than the budget of 3.2 billion Ghana cities. Foreign financing of the budget amounted to 1 billion Ghana cities. The stock of debt increased to 39.1 billion Ghana cities, that's 43.9 percent of GDP, as at the end of June 2013, from 35.1 billion Ghana cities in December 2012. Out of the total public debt stock, the domestic component amounted to 20.9 billion Ghana cities compared to 18.5 billion Ghana cities in December 2012. External debt stock, which also stood at 9.3 billion Ghana US dollars, up from 8.8 billion US dollars over the same period. Monetary and banking sector developments. The pace of expansion in monetary aggregates moderated in the first half of 2013. Broad money grew by 14.2% in June 2013 
compared with 34.2% in the same period of last year. This was largely driven by a sharp drop in the annual growth of foreign currency deposits to 1.8% in June 2013. The latest Bank of Ghana survey of credit conditions showed a general net easing of credit conditions by DMBs. With the exception of consumer credit and long-term credit to large enterprises, which saw some tightening, the credit stands for all other loan types, including SMEs, large enterprises, short-term and mortgage loans, were eased during the period. Annual growth in private sector credit slowed to 33.5% in nominal terms at the end of June 2013 from 39% in June 2012. Similarly, the annual growth of real private sector credit was 20.1% in June 2013, down from 27% in June 2012. The banking sector performed well during the first half of the year with increased competition, asset growth, improved liquidity and profitability. Total assets of the banking industry as at end June 2013 increased to 30.6 billion compared with 24.6 billion Ghana cities in June 2012. This was driven mainly by advances which accounted for 44.7% of the total. The asset group was mainly funded by deposits, which recorded an annual growth of 13.3% to 20.4 billion Ghana cities at the end of June 2013. Non-performing loans, that's the non-performing loans ratio within the banking industry decreased to 12.8% in June 2013 from 13.2% in June 2012. The ratio excluding the loss category also declined to 4.7% from 5.9% during the same period. Interest rates broadly remained unchanged since May, the May meeting. The 91-day Treasury bill rate moved marginally from 23% to 23.1%, while the 182-day bill remained at change 23%. The one-year note, the rate declined from 22.1% to 22% in June while the three-year bond rate rose from 16.9% in May to 19.2% in June. There was no issue of the five-year bond during the period. The average, the weighted average interbank rate inched up from 16.9% to 17% in June 2013. The new base rate formula which seeks to ensure transparency and uniformity in loan pricing in the banking industry became operational during the period. Banks have fully complied with the new framework with the industry average base rate declining by three percentage points. Average lending rates of the banks rose to 27.4% in June 2013 from 27.1% in April 2013. The average rate on three-year bonds on three-month time deposits remains stable around 12.3%. External sector developments. For the first half of the year, the trade, the trade deficit marginally improved to 1.2 billion from 1.3 billion in 2013 on account of a slowdown of both exports and imports. Merchandise exports were 7.5 billion, declining by 0.8% in 2013, while imports declined by 2.6% to 8.6 billion 
reflecting in both oil and non-oil imports. Export earnings from gold and cocoa beans were estimated at 2.7 billion and 1.2 billion respect, respectively, compared to 3.2 billion and 1.6 billion in 2012, due to lower prices and volumes. Oil exports, however, increased by 47.7% in 2012 to 2 billion as a result of increased production by the Jubilee partners. In the period January to June 2013, the Ghana city cumulatively depreciated at a slower rate of 3.4% against the U.S. dollars compared to a depreciation of 17.2% during the same period in 2012. In trade weighted terms, the city appreciated in real terms by 1.8% compared to a depreciation of 14.3% last year. Private inward transfers received through the banking system from January to June 2013 declined by 6.4% on a year-on-year -year basis to 8.3 billion US dollars. Of the total transfers, 928.4 million US dollars accrued to individuals compared with 908.7 million dollars in the same period of 2013. Gross international reserves decreased by 436.4 million dollars to 4.9 billion cities from a stock position of 5.3 billion dollars. The earlier one was also billion dollars. It's, it's, it declined from, from $5.3 billion at the end of December 2012 to $4.9 million at the end of June, June uh, 2013. This was sufficient to cover 2.7 months of imports. Summary and outlook. In summary, prospects for the global economy remained uncertain during the half year. Contributory factors include the slackening growth in emerging market economies and the continued dip in commodity prices in international markets. The slowdown in the U.S. economy also posed significant risks to the external outlook. These developments in the external sector continue to weigh on the domestic economy despite the improvement in the trade balance. The outturn was moderated by a slowdown in import demand. <coughs> Extra rate pressures moderated during the half year relative to the same period last year, largely on account of the various policy measures implemented by the bank. That is from last year and this year. It is expected that the proceeds from the cocoa loan syndication and the euro bond issue amounting to a total of almost $2 billion during the second half of the year would shore up international, international reserves and further calm pressures on the foreign chain markets. The fiscal outcome on cash basis was within the budget target for the half year. The committee however noted with concern the lingering fiscal pressures arising from the huge wage bill and outstanding commitments. However, the committee also noted measures put in place by government to address the shortfall in revenues and also reduce expenditures. These include the reintroduction of the fiscal stabilization levy, imposition of a levy on imports, and the environmental tax. Expenditure control measures include refinancing of the domestic debt to reduce interest costs, regular adjustments of petroleum prices, rationalization and standardization of allowances under the single spine salary scheme, and a moratorium on new projects. It is also expected that there will be a gradual reduction in subsidies on utilities going forward. Prospect for growth improved in the second quarter of the year as evidenced 
in the bank's composite index of economic activity, a rebound in the consumer confidence and improved credit conditions. In the outlook, the improvement in energy supply and the increased oil production are expected to support growth. The committee, however, took cognizance of potential risks to growth, including the continued softening of commodity prices on the world market and the ongoing fiscal consolidation, as well as a worsening business expectation. In assessing the outlook for inflation, the committee noted that the outside risks include potential pass-through effects of further petroleum price adjustments, possible adjustment of utility tariffs, and pressures arising from the impending public sector wage settlement. This could, however, be moderated by the tight monetary policy stance, the ongoing fiscal consolidation, and the favorable seasonal factors arising from the oncoming harvest season. The inflation forecast has shifted marginally since the last MPC, the last MPC meeting, although the committee noted that the forecast for end-year inflation is likely to be close to the upper band of the uh, path. However, subject to the rates and timing of the adjustment in, in utility tariffs, the forecast could return to the central path by the first quarter of 2014. In the circumstance, the committee is of the view that the current monetary policy, the current monetary policy stance is appropriate and therefore decided to maintain the policy rate at 16%. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rafna. It's now question time, so if you have any questions, then...